My name is uh, Pastor Mitch Spring from Spirit and Truth Christian Assembly. And as I mentioned before, our prayers and thoughts are with the family of Kyle. Um, 18 is too young for anybody to uh, leave this earth. And certainly in Otsego County, a small community like this, we've seen far too many young people uh, perish at the poison that is in our streets. But I believe the poison that's in our streets is only a symptom of empty hearts. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a time and a season to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time of war and a time of peace. And you know, right now in our country, we consider ourselves at war with terrorism. But there's a greater war going on, and that's for the hearts and the minds of our young people and our older people. And it's being placed in such a uh, hideous way that people feel that they've got to do something to fit in, not realizing that they are loved. And one of the things that's been said today that I have to concur with is to be involved. The apathy is the enemy and to not care. And, you know, with the terrorism epidemic, they say, if you see something, say something. Well, the same thing is true if you see a friend starting to go downhill or you start seeing personality changes in somebody to get some help and to get them some help. At our church, we uh, a few months back started a, a program called Broken Chains that talks about the heart of addiction and it talks about the, the core of addiction because you know what? Four years ago, we could have been talking about bath salts and five years ago, we could have been talking about something else and today we're talking about opiates. But the problem is the heart. There's a heart issue that people are not having whole hearts and they're not feeling that they can talk to anybody about the needs that are within their heart. And so I would just ask you as, as people of the community, as people of the family of, of God on earth to be involved with people's lives. We heard a sermon this morning in church and it talked about Adam and Eve in the garden. And Adam and Eve disobeyed the one commandment that God had given them. And when their heavenly father showed up to talk to them, they hid themselves. And they sewed fig leaves to try to cover their nakedness. And God said to Adam, Adam, where are you and why have you hid yourself? And he said, well, I was naked and I was afraid. And he said, who told you you were naked? You see, before they had sinned, their nakedness was not in shame. But that sin brought shame and that shame brought separation. And that's the same thing that happens with people that are struggling with addictions. They hide in their shame and they hide in their secrecy. And that is the, the one place that keeps them in the bondage of their sin and of their addiction is that shame. And so when we can let them know that we are all human beings that are flawed, that we all have cracks in our armor, that there are none of us that are without problems, that are none of us that are without our situations that we've had to cope with, then maybe they can come away from their shame and realize, hey, we can share this together. Because that's one thing we found out, that accountability an open confession is so important to recovery. To keep something hid is to keep it in power. To expose it to the light is to begin the healing process. Yes. And so I would just encourage you that if you know somebody that you think may be struggling, to bring up the subject. Maybe by bringing it up by saying, hey, I used to have a problem. You know, as a pastor, sometimes people walk in the church and they only know you as pastor. They didn't know me when I was a drug addict and when I was out on the streets and when I was an alcoholic and when I was doing all that stuff. And sometimes people say, well, I don't think you should tell that story because it kind of glorifies it. And I said, no, that's what led me to the cross. That's what led me to Jesus. Because when I found Jesus, I found that that hole in my heart that I had been searching for through drugs and relationships and everything else was filled with a pure love. It was filled with a love that was accepting me for who I was and not what I had to become. And I, I thank God for that. I thank God for the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross for me and that he set me free from uh, drugs and alcohol. And I believe it's my responsibility to help others. And there's been far too many times I've been to funerals and far too many times I've been in jails and talking to people that have been trapped by the same things I was trapped for, uh, by. And in whatever avenue that you are involved in this crisis and trying to free people from addictions and from things that are hindering them, I would just encourage you, you're not in the fight alone. You're not in the fight without help. And I would encourage you to pray. Don't ever discount the power of prayer. God listens to prayer. He hears prayer. 
And I didn't know Kyle personally, but my prayer is that his passing will not be in vain, that maybe somebody that knew him will take a, a warning and that God's love will guide them to a, a different path. And I, I'm extremely sorry for Kyle's family and for the sorrow that they feel today. And we just want to let you know our prayers and thoughts will be with you. And we uh, will be thinking of you. If there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Our, our Broken Chains uh, support group is kind of a, a Bible study group that talks about what causes addiction and maybe what the heart of addiction is. And if anybody wants to know more about it, they can see me or Brother uh, Brent down there in the baseball cap uh, afterwards, and we'd be happy to let you know more about that.